So we're going to create a new playlist where we're going to test a bunch of different frameworks together. We're going to do a lot of benchmarking and so on. So it's mainly going to be the machine learning and deep learning frameworks. So it's basically just going to be PyTorch, Jax, NumPy, QPy, Keras, TensorFlow, and so on. So we're basically just going to take all the machine learning and deep learning, basically just the numerical operation libraries. We're going to take them, do some comparisons, benchmarking both on CPU, but also on GPU. We're both going to run it on Intel CPUs, Mac CPU, Mac GPUs, if that's available. And of course, we're also going to run it on CUDA GPUs. We're going to see which of the frameworks are the most optimized and also for specific use cases and operations. So start with this video here, we're going to run it on my MacBook M2 chip. So we're just going to utilize the CPU, but we're going to set up the script. We're going to go through the code and so on, how to do basic operations on matrices with a specific size. And then we can increase the size. We can increase the number of iterations that we want to take the average over and so on. So let's just jump straight into it. I'm creating this playlist here so we can go in and benchmark a lot of these frameworks because I act like just been starting to look into the JAX framework. So it's basically just like Autograd and XLA. So accelerated linear algebra, which is very useful for deep learning and also machine learning when we're implementing stuff from scratch. And those frameworks like PyTorch and JAX, they are highly optimized to run matrix operations, mat, mat multiplication, element wise multiplication and all those basic operations. So we're definitely going to test that out and also highly optimized to run on specific hardware. So let's just jump straight into the code. Let's go over the Python script here, which we're going to use as a baseline. We both have a function for measuring the time, comparing different types of operations, and then we can always add new operations in here when we do our comparison and benchmark and also different data types. And on specific hardware, we go we're going to use on CPU, GPUs, CUDA GPUs, Apple hardware, and so on. So definitely stay tuned for that. I just really want to create this playlist here to just give you guys an understanding of like the benchmarks, comparisons, how do these frameworks compare to each other, which one should you use for specific use cases and so on, because it really depends on the operations as well. And also just which one in your daily life. So I've mainly been using NumPy and also PyTorch, but recently just discovered JAX, which is pretty cool and highly optimized for machine learning operations and deep learning operations in general, when we're just working with raw matrices, raw data that we want to process, and especially like large scale data. So when we increase the size of our matrices, it is also going to scale more efficiently compared to some of the other frameworks. So I'm definitely going to dive way more into that. Maybe we create some playlists where we're going to create some neural networks, deep learning, machine learning, in JAX as well. So we've mainly been using PyTorch. So first of all here, we just import the different modules. We need time, NumPy, Torch, and JAX. So this is what we're going to use. It's pretty much the exact same function calling, the exact same function names, data types, and so on that we need to specify just the way that we import it. So NumPy is going to be NP, Torch is just going to be Torch, and JAX NumPy is going to be JNP. So it's really easy to use. Again, that you can just call like array, mean, standard deviation, random, as type and so on. It's pretty much the exact same thing for all the different frameworks. So there's some kind of like standard that you can use. So it's also easy to go in and do new frameworks, adapt them, but also use them together. So right now we have a measure time function. We just throw in the operation that we want to time the global. So if you have some global variables as well, and also the number of iterations that we want to run through. And this is very important because if we just run one iteration through, it might not give us a good overview over how the function performs, because sometimes it needs to like warm up, we need to run a, a bunch of different stuff together, but also like how the resources are allocated on the CPU, the timing and so on, the context switching. So it really needs to be like a number of iterations. And then we take the average of that. And that is a way better comparison. And also when we're doing benchmarks. So right now we just start a timer, we just take a follow up here running through the number of iterations that we want to do. Then we call our eval function here. So it's basically just evaluating our operation with these global and local variables, then we end the timer, we divide it by the number. So we take the average of the time multiply it with 1000 to get it in milliseconds instead of seconds. Now we can then have a function for comparing the different operations, we need to specify the size. So this is the size of our matrix. So right now we just set it to equal. So right now we just set it equal to 1000. So there will be a 1000 by 1000 matrix that we're going to use. And we can always change this here. But if we have, for example, have 10,000 by 10,000, it's basically just like a 10 K image, and it will take a very long time to go in and do matrix multiplication, and also do it 100 times 
four or three different frameworks. So again, that will take a very long time, but we can definitely test out with 100 and also 1000. And then you can see how the different frameworks also scale relatively to each other. So right now, we're just going to set up some random values with NumPy. So this is how we can do it, np.random.rand, and we specify the size. And we also need to make sure that the floating point or like the data type is the exact same one for all the different framework, because it could be that you're using like float 64 for some of the operations. And then for another framework, you're using float 32 or float 16. Often float 16 is not really supported on CPU. So we're just going to stick with float 32 for the CPU. But once we're going to do the comparisons and benchmarks with GPU, we're definitely going to test out way more data times because it's just going to speed up the process and the meaning by the floating point values is that when we have float 32, it is basically just 32 bits for each floating point value that we have, where if you're using float 16, it will only be 16 bits representing that number. So it's basically the half of the size compared to float 32. So that's one of the things behind quantization. So by doing that, we basically just lowered the resolution. In most cases, we won't really lose any accuracy by going from float 32 to float 16, even though we have the size of the data type. So right now we can just convert it to torch here. So after we have it from NumPy, we can just convert it to torch. So torch from NumPy, we throw in the different arrays here, make sure that they act like two floating point 32. And for Jax, we can just call jnp.array. So it's the exact same naming as NumPy. We just have a J in front and it's going to speed up our processing time significantly as you're going to see in just a second. So sometimes you might actually just go in and use JAX instead of NumPy, it's the exact same functionality. It's just going to run way faster, especially if you're running this in real life applications, real time applications, doing image processing and so on. I know that a lot of you guys following the channel are within computer vision. So it's really important in there when we want to do real time processing on images, because those are actually like relatively large matrices that we need to process in real time. And also 30 frames per second. So that's also a very big limitation. Now we can specify our list here of the different operations that we want to do. So we want to do matrix multiplication, element wise addition, element wise multiplication. And again, this is just operations that we're going to throw into our eval function. So we're just going to evaluate this. And here we just specify how we actually call those functions in the different frameworks. So for NumPy, we just have NP dot dot. So this is for matrix multiplication np underscore a np underscore b and here we have torch.mm so it's just matrix multiplication for jacks we just specify it in the exact same way as numpy for element wise addition we just have a plus sign for all the different frameworks so exact same naming and also for element wise multiplication we just have this multiplication sign right now we're going to have a list with all the results and we're just going to have a for loop running through all the operations so it's basically just our list here we're going to extract the matrix multiplication element wise addition and also the elements wise multiplication and that's what we have here so we have our operation name numpy operation torch operation and also our jacks operation so these are this functionality then we go in and measure the time. We specify the operation that we want to do, the array that we want to do the operation on, and also which of the frameworks that we're using inside of our dictionary here. So we call the function measurement time. We throw in the operation. We throw in the matrices that we want to do the operation on. Then we take the results. They will be stored in these variables. So those will just be the times that we're returning in milliseconds. And then we can just append it to the results, return the results, and also print the results afterwards. We can also store it in a CSV file, JSON file, or whatever, but right now we're just printing it. So we're now opened up a terminal. Let's go in and run the program. So we call Python comparison. Let's take a look at the results. So right now, again, we just have 1000 by 1000, and this is in milliseconds. So right now we can see that NumPy is relatively high compared to the other one. So it took around 11 milliseconds, JAX 4 milliseconds, and PyTorch 4 milliseconds. So it's actually like 11 times faster running it on PyTorch compared to NumPy. And JAX is also way faster compared to NumPy, but not as fast as PyTorch. We can kind of like see the same here for the element wise addition and multiplication where PyTorch is also the winner. JAX is a bit behind and also NumPy. And NumPy is actually like better for element wise operations, which is pretty surprisingly, but again, NumPy is very slow on matrix multiplication. So even though you might think that it doesn't really matter that much, it act like does, at least if you're running like a large size image. And if you have multiple images, like running whole neural networks, machine learning models, and so on, it has a significant difference. So right now, let's maybe just try to increase the size here and see if it changes relatively to each other. So let's increase it by a 3x. And let's try to see how it affects the results. So this might just take a bit longer to be able to see the results. 
So this act like pretty interesting and we're definitely going to test it out way more. And also on GPU, it will act like just become more interesting when we test it out on the GPU, also with different data types and so on. So here we might just get the results in a second, but it's pretty cool. We're definitely going to add more iterations over time, test it out for different use cases because it's really good to have a good understanding of like how these frameworks work. For JAX, I would probably expect that JAX is significantly faster, probably even faster than PyTorch when we run it on the GPU and play around with these floating point values because sometimes the frameworks are also optimized for specific data types. So not even just operations and hardware, but also specific data types. So it's kind of like just a mesh in a, in a jungle. Like it's just a jungle figuring out like what framework to use, testing out these functionalities. So that's kind of like why I want to do it just to give you guys like a high level overview because most of you guys are probably just using NumPy and not using the other ones here, even though it's the exact same functions that you call but you can actually like get a significant time or like speed up increase here by just using the other frameworks. So again, NumPy is very slow. We can see that we increased the size of our array with three. So it's basically just like 3000 by 3000 now. And the time here was actually like increased by tenfold here 30 times. And here we can actually like see that it increased about uh, 20 times. If you go down, take a look at the other ones here. So again, PyTorch is the winner. So Jax here actually caught up a bit here in PyTorch, but NumPy is still very slow. Element-wise multiplication or addition, we have four, 1.7, 2.5. So right now Jax is faster compared to NumPy, where it was the other way around before. So when we increase the size, we actually like get more advantages from the other more highly optimized framework when where NumPy is more like a general CPU numerical operation framework where we can also do like linear algebra and a lot of other different types of stuff. But we can also do that with Jax and PyTorch. So right now it looks pretty promising. Jax is catching up to PyTorch and also it has beaten NumPy. The most important things and the most significant results are when we're going to run this on GPU. Just for a sake of it, let's just try to run this on 5000 and see if, if Act Like Jax can catch up with PyTorch. And I'm just going to let this run and let's take a look at the results after that. So now we can see the results here. Let's go down and take a look at it. NumPy took around like 500 milliseconds per iteration. And again, this was running 400. Jax is still slower than PyTorch, kind of like the same results that we're seeing. Okay, Jax is Act Like catching more and more up to PyTorch, but I think the most more significant improvements will come from the GPU. So this was pretty interesting. We're definitely going to cover more operations, different types of operations. We're going to create neural networks and so on and test out on that and also different data types and hardware accelerators. So thank you guys for watching this video here. I hope you've learned a ton and just gotten some insights into some of these frameworks. I think it's pretty interesting to go in and test. And it's also pretty interesting just to see like how much differences there are for different frameworks, even though on a higher level, they look very identical. So thank you a lot for watching. So I just hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.